Being a One Punch Man fan, I couldn't really contain how much excited I was when I watched the first trailer of season 3. I literally repeated it more than 20 times, not believing that it's officially finally here. We've been waiting for 5 long years. The trailer itself in my opinion looked amazing. I know a lot of you guys are very skeptical about this studio, given that the quality of the second season dropped drastically compared to the first one. But I'm still very optimistic and hopeful that this season would be treated much much better than the previous one. This time they should have a better schedule and more time to carefully work on it. The animation looked clean and the OST in particular is amazing. However, in this video, we would try to speculate or assume how many chapters they will cover in this season. Which what would they start and where would it end exactly. Now given that both seasons had 12 episodes, it's safe to assume that the third season would probably contain the exact same amount. I'll be very surprised and shocked but still extremely happy if they decided to animate 24 episodes but I highly doubt it. Alright, pretty important things I gotta say before is that first, I would not be including the bonus chapters. Remember in season 2, Glass's backstory was added in episode 11 which is partially taken from a bonus chapter called A New Wind Blows that was featured in volume 3. Second, the anime is known for reordering events or backstories to suit the narrative in a particular moment of the story. Orders of chapters can be switched to reach a good cliffhanger for example. Third, depending on the pacing of season 2 where it was obviously much faster than season 1 and covered a lot of chapters, we would assume season 3 would be similar in that regard. And the last point, the numbers of chapters would be taken from the official release release of the English version and not the fan translation scans. With all of that being said, thank you so much for 20k subscribers. I really really appreciate it and I'm looking forward to make more entertaining videos for you guys. And for that, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for me to be able to break my limiter and produce more videos. Thank you so much. Okay, let's dive into how many chapters I think season 3 would cover. Now season 2 ended with Saitama defeating Elder Centipede and Garou being taken by Phoenix Man to the Monster Association hideout. This happened in chapter 85. So episode 1 would adapt chapters 86, 87 and then 88. This episode starts with the Hero Association executives being amazed that King took care of Elder Centipede alone. Sitch diverts the conversation towards Garou and states that they need to label him as a dragon level threat. Fast forward to Sikingar being revealed to be in charge of the rescue operation. With Child Emperor searching for the Monster Association base, multiple heroes such as Tatsumaki, Pig God, Darkshine, Atomic Samurai with his disciples and Amai Mask assembled in the hero's headquarters. Metal Knight chose not to participate and warns Child Emperor not to trust anyone. After that, it will cut back to Saitama's house where Fubuki finds Team Saitama recovering from Elder Centipede's fight. I personally had a blast seeing these different interactions in Saitama's house way back in the day, and to be frankly honest, I cannot wait to see this animated. They have a huge conversation that has big dialogues about the Monster Association and the Hero Hunter. Saitama after decides to go after him by himself. The episode would cut after to Garu waking up in the Monster Association hideout. A lot of things happens here, but afterwards, Garu walks forward to find Narinki's private force begging for their lives to be spared in front of the massive numbers of monsters gathered in the headquarters. This will also be the first time we see G5 and Royal Ripper, two demon level monsters. Switch forward to Garu being noticed by Royal Ripper and has no choice but to come forward. Gero Gero then reveals that she actually wants to make him a cadre, but in order to join, Orochi states that he at least needs to kill one hero. They eventually allow him to leave, but assigns both Royal Ripper and Bug God to follow him and see if he could meet that certain requirement. Multiple things happen outside, but Garu eventually goes to a diner to somehow recover with food. And by perfect chance and ironic Ironically, Saitama is also there with Fubuki where he notices he actually does not have his wallet with him, so now he cannot pay for the food he ordered. However, he sees that Garu has left without paying and chooses to chase him as an excuse to save his own back. And while Garu is walking and considering Gero Gero's offer, he sees Taryu getting bullied and proceeds to stop them. Taryu after apologizes for running away the last time. This I would say is a very important moment for Garu's character growth, since even Taryu recognizes that deep down, Garu holds a soft spot and he is 
actually a hero who protected him twice. Saitama later arrives and Garu attempts to kill him but obviously gets brutally one-shotted again. And just after waking up, Roy, Ripper and Bug God came forward. After witnessing that Garu has saved a kid and seemingly got one-shotted by a small fry hero, they deduced that he is not worthy of being a hero and should be killed immediately alongside the kid Tario. Now the cliffhanger for this episode would be this panel of Garu telling Tario to stay back as he prepares to fight these two demon level monsters. Now episode 2 with adapt chapters 89 and 90 obviously continues from the last cliffhanger which is Garu trying to protect Tario and himself from these two demon level threats. The fight against the two monsters begins but after that it cuts to Phoenix Man's conversation with Kirogiru where she reveals that she was the one who made Orochi. Fast forward to Zombie Man finally finding the House of Evolution culprits only to be told that an actual hero has already destroyed it and that now they are seemingly just living a normal life. Life. Now the conversation that takes place here is I would say one of the most pivotal moments in One Punch Man period. As a matter of fact, I think this episode would be called Limiter. This is what we see and hear in the first trailer, where Garu is having a hard time fighting both Bug God and Royal Ripper, with Dr. Genus narrating in the background explaining the concept of Limiter to Zombie Man, a growth restriction that is placed by God. Reveals that there is only one person who broke his Limiter through sheer efforts alone and that is obviously Saitama. This moment is extremely important, since it foreshadows that Garu seemingly is going through the same thing, teasing the eventual Garu vs Saitama fight. Garu after starts to think that he actually has a chance of defeating both of them, but unfortunately another monster appears with Tario taken as a hostage. With that, Royal Ripper makes the most of that situation by brutally slashing Garu from behind while he was distracted by the other monster, but God after tags with a punch in the gut and Royal Ripper proceeds to barrage him with multiple slashes until he was stopped by Bug God, leaving Garu in such a devastating state, covered in blood and looks like he's about to die. Now back to Saitama's apartment, my favorite part of the episode, <laughs> a lot of conversations occurs and I would not go over all of them in detail. After that, we would see a montage of multiple monsters preparing for the S-Class hero's assault. Fast forward to Sludge Jellyfish talking about the Kadres being dragon level monsters who are stronger than the S-Class heroes that even King cannot stand a chance against. Now this episode's last scene would be Garu waking up covered in blood with his clothes stuck to his wounds. He remembers that Taryu has been taken as a hostage, completely flips from normal to absolute seriousness. This certainly reminds me of season 1, episode 8's cliffhanger of Saitama turning serious when he heard that an S-class hero was taken down by the Deep Sea King, thinking it was actually Janos but instead was Puri Puri Prisoner, showing the similarities between the two. Episode 3 would probably cover 3 chapters, 91, 92, and 93. So this episode would start with Seeking Gar and Child Emperor discussing which members should be included for the assault team, deciding to eventually remove both Silver Fang and Demon Cyborg for specific or I would say still understandable reasons. This episode, same as the previous ones, would cut after to Team Saitama for the purpose of boiling down the seriousness of the show as usual. Garo After enters the Monster Association hideout and gets sensed by Kero Kero. The episode would cut to King taking out the trash only to be found by some hero association members who has been searching for him all this time. Seeing that his clothes are dirty, they seem to have an idea that King was locked in a fierce battle against monsters all night. They ask him to come with them to the headquarters where the main force of the assault team is already assembled and wants to discuss battle tactics and strategies. Fast forward to Royal Ripper going to Tario's cell wanting to slowly torture him as killing makes his life worthwhile. Bagaru bursts through the wall and catches Royal Ripper's knife and completely one-shot him, showing his insane growth by experiencing a near-death situation. A lot of things happens next, but Toryu begs Garu to go and help Waganma, the other kid who was with him in the cell. But just as he turns around, he sees an enormous monster in the shape of a dog, sitting just behind Toryu. Garu says that his instincts are telling him not to fight this monster and decides to slowly walk away from him, not to agitate him. However, he gets 
caught and attacked by Super Mouse, Unihorn, and Shower Head, three demon level monsters, who proceeds to use their best abilities but couldn't land a single hit on Garu. Shower Head is annoyed and at the same time is confused on to why is this opponent capable of fighting three demon level threats at once. However, Garu thinks that the proper explanation for this is that he must already be a dragon level monster. I feel like this episode could end perfectly with this panel, but I think Rover showing up again and attacking everybody with that huge blast would be the cliffhanger for this episode. Now for episode 4, it would cover the rest of chapter 93 and then everything that goes down in chapter 94. If they actually go by this order, it would be a heavily action-packed episode, with having Karu vs Rover, Gero Gero and eventually Orochi all displayed in a single episode. Gero Gero explains to Garu the concept of how she managed to make Orochi as strong as he is, and tells him that his potential surpasses even his. Now I wouldn't obviously go over all the choreography and details of each fight, however I think this episode if the pacing is good, should end with Garu being defeated by Orochi and Saitama about to infiltrate the monster's headquarters. Episode 4 should be one of the best episodes of One Punch Man if adapted correctly and in this particular order. Now episode 5 would adapt chapters 95 and some bits of chapter 96, where it starts with the S-class heroes strategizing the battle against the monster association. This contains a lot of important dialogues and a very funny scene with King later on, definitely one of my favorite moments in the show. It would also show that the team would include 15 heroes of class A, B and C that would act as a support for the main squad. King later informs Bang and Bomb that the association is preparing to attack the monsters without them. He also tells him to bring Janos and Saitama to secretly accompany him in his attack. Obviously this is just an excuse to save his own back by assuring strong characters are around him all the time. King goes back to the heroes team and with that they are ready to march. This episode would show this amazing high panel where all the heroes are marching towards the hideout oozing with confidence. Definitely a moment I want to see animated. Fast forward to Janos finally getting his new upgrade form, meets up with Fubuki and later both Bang and Bomb of which they updated Janos on the current situation. They want to join the attack but Saitama is nowhere to be found. Janos says that he would wait for him and together they would join them later. With that being said, King, Bomb, Bang and Fubuki march towards the Monster Association hideout. Now the Hero Association team arrives at this scene and gets welcomed by multiple low tier monsters. This would also be the first time we see an unknown threat level monster, a very cool designed character called Jagon who can use psychokinetic powers to fight, throws multiple buildings at the heroes but Tatsumaki shields them easily. The other high tier heroes protects the support team from the building's rubbles. This episode in my opinion would perfectly end with Tatsumaki going up against Jagan producing a large hurricane in the sky. So episode 6 would adapt the rest of chapter 96 and everything in chapter 97. This episode would start with the support team showing they can handle themselves by defeating the monsters at sight, showing their different fighting styles and skills, insinuating that these are the next promising heroes for the next generation. But Rhino Wrestler appears again, a monster we've already seen in season 2, proved to be too much for the support team to handle and the only one who stood somehow a better chance was Eiyan, the number 2 A class hero. But given that Rhino Wrestler is currently a demon level threat, an S-class hero is definitely needed to take care of him. And who is better than Atomic Samurai? Iyayan's master who has noticed that his disciple has a weird obsession of wanting to cut Rhino's horn. Kamikaze goes to not only blitz and kill Rhino Wrestler with ease in such tremendous speed, but also proceeds to do the same thing to multiple other monsters. The episode would now show all the S-class heroes presented, killing all the big dogs of the monsters in that area without breaking a Sweat, showing and clearly presenting the obvious gap between the S-class heroes and the support team, with Tatsumaki off screens Jagon like he was a bag of trash and twists him so fast to the point of completely incinerating him. However, all of that was just a plan for Giro Giro to see what the S-class heroes are capable with. And with all of that being said, I presume that the episode would end with the complete reveal of the Kadres, the Monster Association's strongest monsters. This would serve as a good cliffhanger for the episode, as anime only watchers would see the complete team for the first time and wonder if these are strong foes for the S-class heroes.
Episode 7 would be my personal favorite if it was handled correctly. It would adapt both chapters 98 and 99 and some bits of chapter 100, where it would start with the attack team heroes infiltrating the monster's hideout, with Flashy Flash being the first hero we would be witnessing in serious combat. He would first easily blitz 3 monsters, but later gets confronted by 2 demon level threats, Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame, both are shinobi who joined the monster association to solely kill Flashy Flash. Now I know that I'll be extremely hyped while watching this episode since this is one of my absolute favorite fights in the entire series. Obviously I wouldn't go over all the details regarding this fight but Flashy Flash fights both of them and eventually kills them in their superior monster forms. Both individually are dragon level monsters when they are in that state. Not only that but Flashy Flash indicated he was holding back and wanted to kill them simultaneously. This is the first time in the entire series we see a hero other than Saitama displaying this level of strength where he killed two dragon level monsters. The fight choreography is insane and I hope the animators handles the slow motion and the explosions correctly and not mess it up. I personally have high hopes for this particular fight. This episode would after transition to Child Emperor and to be honest there could be three different cliffhangers. Either it would end with Child Emperor meeting up with the demon level monster Phoenix Man or maybe it would go beyond and the cliffhanger would be G5 appearing to fight Isamu or if the pacing is rushed Isamu would run away from G5 but the episode ends with Phoenix Man getting resurrected and shows his new form. I personally think it better be the first one with teasing the fight at the end of the episode of Child Emperor vs Phoenix Man. This episode would cover the rest of the previous chapter with the addition of chapter 101 and 102, where it would start with Isamu easily killing Phoenix Man, but then G5 appears and Isamu decides that the best course of action is to run away from him, since he cannot take him out without Brave Giant, but at the same time, G5 is not strong enough to waste such a strong transformation on him. That would prove to be a wise decision, since just right after escaping, Phoenix Man gets resurrected and Child Emperor fights him briefly just to understand that now he has no choice but to use Brave Giant on him, since Phoenix Man appears to be actually that strong. This episode would mostly contain the amazing fight between Phoenix Man and Isamu and would end with the same cliffhanger of chapter 102, leaving the watchers wondering if Isamu has actually killed Phoenix Man this time. Episode 9 would also cover two chapters, 103 and 104, where it would continue off with Isamu's fight against Phoenix Man. He eventually meets up Saitama underground, who later frees him from Phoenix Man's spiritual dimension. And with the help of Saitama, Isamu ends up defeating him. They after try to get to the surface to secure the kid by giving him to the support team. It would later cut to zombie man killing multiple monsters, only to be faced against pure blood or vampire, whatever you wanna call him. This would be a very brutal fight, certainly feels like it's from a different anime. This episode would end with zombie men eventually killing vampire alongside the other robots and monsters. Now episode 10 would adapt 4 chapters, 105, 106, 107, and 108, since all of them are not necessarily long chapters. This would also contain a lot of action scenes, mostly showing Atomic Samurai's disciples duking it out with multiple monsters with the help of Narinki's mercenaries who were saved in the beginning of this episode. Obviously a lot of things happens before this particular event, especially with Amai Mask trying to contain himself from killing them instead of saving them like Eion wanted. Fast forward to them eventually coming across a demon level monster called Devil Long Hair, in which they would eventually manage to defeat him with extreme difficulties. Still a very impressive feat indeed. After this, they would cut to the most important part of this episode, which is Atomic Samurai killing all the monsters, just to get confronted by G5, who according to him managed to copy Atomic Samurai's every sword move. However, as it was expected, a cheap copy can never defeat the original. G5 after distracts Kamikaze with a light beam and proceeds to run away since he knew he can never manage to defeat him. Atomic Samurai continues walking until a kid appears to be running from a weird looking monster chasing him. That kid is none other than Tario, the one Garu cares deeply about, and the monster who chases him is one of the cadres called Black S. I assume this episode would end with Atomic Samurai obviously intervening by stopping Black S from reaching Tario, teasing the next big fight between an S-class hero and a dragon level executive.
Now, as usual, the episode before the last one would always serve as the hype before the actual hype. Season 1, episode 11 had the S-Class heroes going up against Melsgard and Boros finally meeting Saitama. As for season 2, it had Garu going up against 8A and B-Class heroes, Genos, and eventually Silverfang and his brother Bomb. However, this one I'd say would adapt three major chapters, 109, 110, and 111. It would feature major fights like Atomic Samurai vs. Black S, Zombie Man vs. Homeless Emperor, Pig God vs gums and Puri Puri vs Neon. All of these are dragon level monsters who are the executives of the monster association. This episode would serve as a reminder for the viewers that this assault is not an easy task, where Atomic Samurai and Zombie Man both gets completely demolished. Neon blitzes and slashes Puri Puri and gums eats Pig God. This is the first real else the heroes are gonna take. It would also be the first episode where the entity they call God would be mentioned in the anime. A very important piece of lore would be dropped in Homeless Emperor's backstory. Although this is how I envisioned the episode would be, I struggled so hard to find how this episode would end. There could be different orders just to give a good cliffhanger and it would work. Let's say that they start with Atomic Samurai vs Black S, and that they switch to Neon and Puri Puri, after to Gums and Pig God. Don't you think it would be great for it to end with God being revealed at the end, and Homeless Emperor ready to barrage Zombie Man with countless beams, with the last scene showing Saitama still walking in the hideout. But any ending would work, as I think every Everything in this episode is very important and very interesting as well. Now, the last episode must always contain a crazy good fight. Season 1 had Boros vs Saitama, and Season 2 had Elder Centipede pose a great threat just to eventually get Ceres punched by Saitama. However, to end this season with a blast, Season 3's last episode must contain the Monster Association leader going up against the strongest hero of all time, Saitama. Therefore, they should adapt 4 chapters, 112, 113, 114, and 115. This episode starts with Dark Shine going up against Transform Bug God who gets brutally and easily one-shotted. It would after cut to Atomic Samurai's disciples having to run away from evil natural water, who would be revealed for the first time since he was not shown in episode 6 cliffhanger with the other executives. This episode would also contain the most screen time for Saitama in this whole season, where he finds Rover, punches him enough not to kill him because he considers him a dog and not an actual monster. Neon attempts to kill Saitama but fails miserably, decides after to run away since now he is sure they cannot deal with the heroes due to having this strong anomaly who can one-shot a cadre and take damage from another one easily. It would after cut to Tatsumaki finally finding Giro Giro who stood no chance against her whatsoever, decides to rely on Orochi to kill Tatsumaki but Orochi does not respond to the call. Giro Giro is shocked and concludes that the only explanation is that Orochi is fighting an opponent even stronger than Tatsumaki, which is very absurd. Cuts after to that opponent being none other than Saitama who already met Orochi. This would be a hyped episode, exciting and funny all at the same time, where Saitama eventually stops Orochi's strongest attack with the series squirt gun and kills him with one normal punch. I don't want to go over all the important lore and pivotal plot dialogues that occurs, but I think that this episode and all of season 3 would end with revealing that Orochi was nothing but a sacrifice for God, and the last scene would be the moon watching from above, same as the last panel of chapter 115. Now with all of this being said, I'm still very excited to see how they animate and produce season 3. Very optimistic and hopeful that it would be much better than season 2. I want you guys to show One Punch Man tremendous love and support no matter what. And I really hope that you enjoyed this type of videos. Until next time, please take good care of yourself.